So you got yourself a Retroid Pocket 5, or an Odin 2 Mini, or an Odin 2, and you want to play some Fallout New Vegas using Game Hub, but you don't know what to do. Well, that's why you're here today, because I'm going to show you guys how I set up Fallout New Vegas using Game Hub for all of the devices that I mentioned above. <laughs> So I'm logged into my GOG account right now. And when you see your games inside of your GOG account, you're going to actually select the game and you're going to scroll down until you see a section that says download offline backup game installers. Now you're going to download all three of these parts. You can download the patch file as well. I think the patch file helps with some bugs and stuff like that. However, all I'm going to do is just download each in individual part by itself. Now, if you've got this any other ways, like GOG Unlocked, I think is, you know, another website you can look at if you want to, then by all means, it still works the same. I tested this with both versions just because I paid for this version and then I found you can get it other ways from GOG Unlocked. As you see here, this is my GOG Unlocked version. Same amount of files, same size of files. It's nothing different. I've tried it with that, but we're going to do it with the actual GOG account. For those that want to actually purchase this, it's very cheap. You can get G2A, G2A keys for very, very cheap. I think I paid like $7 for my G2A key and I ended up using it with my GOG account. So let's wait for this to download and then we'll continue forth with the next step. Now that all those files are downloaded, we're going to navigate to our file browser. I'm going to grab these three files right here and I'm going to click on my three dots. And as you notice, I didn't download the patch file because I don't find it's necessary, but you can do so if you want to. Click on the three dots, click copy to, click Retroid Pocket 5. Now I find this a lot more compatible when you actually copy the files directly to your internal storage instead of your SD card. Don't ask why, not sure why. I think this is maybe just a bug with GameSeer right now or Game Hub right now. So create a folder and then just call it Fallout New Vegas if you want to or Fallout NV just like so and paste all of those files in there. Now the reason why I'm copying them is because I like to copy files just in case when I move them data is lost or anything. Now you can move them if you want but it's not that hard to just sit there and copy them as long as you have enough storage and wait for them to actually copy over and then go and delete the other files so as long as you make sure that you have actually copied these correctly. If that makes sense hopefully uh, it does because <laughs> basically i'm going to delete these out of my downloads now so it saves up space and now we're going to navigate over to our documents folder we're going to see that we have the fallout 4 or fallout 4 fallout new vegas files in here now we're going to navigate back to game hub press the start button though go to your game press a on your game now i always do this backwards because i have uh, xbox mode set up so i'm going to press b Click on your PC icon on the top. You probably have like a little thing saying, hey, this is where everything is. Just ignore that too. Just go through it and then click the plus icon. Now navigate to your documents folder, wherever you put your game, of course. And I put mine in my documents and I'm going to click on the setup icon. Now you can try to change your name here. Another bug of uh, this application is that when you change this name, sometimes it doesn't always hold on to it. You can change this icon. I highly recommend you to change it first. I already downloaded a Fallout New Vegas icon right here and then basically change the name again and then you can actually download everything properly. I highly recommend you to download the icon first and then change the name because it does what it just did there. It changed the name back. But there we go. Now it's set to Fallout New Vegas instead. The next thing you're going to do is click on this little settings icon on the right hand side which is white with a little gear looking thing right there. And then click on game settings. The next thing you're going to do is go to compatibility. You're going to leave all of this for now. But what you're going to do is go to component, go to install component. And you're going to install mono. Install mono, very important because this helps with pushing past a certain spot. When you try to install this, there's a .NET framework that tries to install. And it bugs out sometimes when you try to install it without having this mono installed. Now, the other thing I like to install is the VC re, re, bleh, <laughs> the redistribution redistribution of 2022 uh, micro Microsoft's Visual C++. I like to install all that first and then basically jump in to actually install. <laughs> I don't know why I was stuttering that. Basically install this because we're going to actually need this anyways. And this basically blocks having to install that manually when we get into the actual game itself and the container. Now the next thing, I highly recommend you to install this through the container, but you can install this 
through the actual basically game itself by clicking play now but the reason why i highly recommend you to install it through the container which is where we're going to find our saves and all that kind of stuff later on down the road is because you will get a base understanding of how to actually use the container but i'm going to just do it basically through this because i have found more success installing it through the enter container setup section rather than basically using it the other way now as you can see this looks like windows sort of right so what we're going to do is navigate over to my computer and we're going to look for our drive so sometimes it's d sometimes it's e as you can see i think d is just your downloads folder i'm going to go to my e and then i'm going to go to documents and there it is right there which is fallout new vegas now i'm going to double click on the setup fallout new vegas and wait for the little window right here to pop up and click OK. Now this is up to you. This part is very, very important. Click on options. And now we can select where we want to install the actual launcher and everything. I'm going to tell you now that I have tried multiple different things. If you know another way, I cannot for the life of me just use the launcher by itself because there's probably some other data that Game Hub or whatever installs somewhere, not sure where, but it installs some file somewhere and the launcher just does not work. It was like this for WinLater too. So I'm going to select my E drive again, and I'm going to select my documents folder, and I'm just gonna do it in my documents folder. And it's gonna create a new folder called Fallout New Vegas inside of my documents folder. Now I'm going to click on check file integrity. I'm gonna click on yes to accepting the terms of EULA, and I'm going to click install. I'm going to wait for this to check the integrity and then let it do its thing while it's installing all the other files. Now that we have this installed, as you can see, it is ready to be launched. So once we installed those two components, that is what basically fixed the, if you have any issues with Follow New Vegas, the crashes. I had messed around with this for an entire day on multiple different devices. And then I installed that mono and that distribution and it worked out great. As you saw up here, no crashes. I didn't have to restart anything. However, if you do end up having any hangups or anything like that where it just gets frozen for any reason, then basically just try to redo the whole process again. Now click launch. It's going to try to detect your system information and this one detected it for high quality, which is awesome. And you can just technically press play. However, don't do that. Just click exit. You're gonna navigate and click out the exit desktop and then you're gonna click on yes and wait for it to actually exit. Now the next thing you're going to do is click on the startup file path. Now this is why I selected the startup file path to be a specific spot because we need to know where that launcher file is. When you set the launcher file to the C directory on the device, you don't know where it is. I have never been able to find it whatsoever. Not sure where they install it. Tried the data directory, tried the hidden files, all that kind of stuff, connected it to my computer. Not sure where Game Hub puts those files. So that's why I select a specific location, which was my documents folder. And as you can see here, we have a file folder that says it has 36 files in it. And now you're going to click on the follow launcher nvlauncher.exe. Now, don't try to run the game yet. You need to click back, click back, back, keep going back out of this, and then just basically close out of Game Hub. There's an issue with it recognizing that you selected a new file. It'll try to just remake you go through the setup process again. If you didn't follow this part and I get that question, that means that you didn't follow this part of the video. This part of the video is not very long. Now go to Game Hub again, and then you should be able to just press play on that game and just get into Fallout New Vegas for the very first time. It runs pretty great on the Retroid Pocket 5. I have the Retroid Pocket 5 set to high performance mode. You can probably get away with performance with Fan to Smart. And yes, it's playing super awesome. As you can see here, you're loaded right into the actual play menu. Click on play with your little mouse. This is your mouse right here on the touch screen. And you can actually jump in and actually just start playing the game. Again, the menu just is basically down to like 17 to 20 FPS, but it does go back up a bit. And as you can see, the CPU is at 100%, and that means that I have my high performance mode set to on. But again, you could probably get away with performance mode, but if you start seeing any stuttering or anything like that, you can change that to be a lower, basically, performance if you want to. But I don't like changing anything like that while I'm in the game because I find that sometimes it does bug out the game. 
but just press B. It should recognize your controls. My controls are set up to basically Xbox mode. So B is my A button and A is my B button. I'm just gonna skip the actual intro. I'm sure you guys have seen the intro a lot, but now you can actually go and play. If you have a Retroid Pocket 5, follow New Vegas on your Retroid Pocket 5. Now, if you wanna get rid of this little window right here, I like to turn this off, which is basically just the little uh, display at the bottom. I don't care about that when I'm playing a game. I only care about that when I'm showing you guys what the performances are and everything of the game. However, I think the game looks freaking awesome and it plays pretty decent on even all of the devices I tested on. I tested on the Odin 2 and played it for over an hour. It didn't have a single crash or anything and it played pretty damn well. So go enjoy Follow New Vegas. Again, make sure you follow this entire guide because again, I've done so much work into this and i hope it helps you guys get fallout new vegas go check out gog.com or gog unlocked whatever you want to do because that is how i ended up getting this working which is using the gog unlocked and the gog it doesn't matter both of them work the same there's just basically free files see you later love you all don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so if you want to see more of this kind of stuff let me know in the comment section below i'm going to go play some more fallout new vegas on my odin 2 mini not on my Retroid Pocket 5 because I already have a save file on my Odin 2 Mini.